Fields back, and now Mr. Pollock, you are recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Ranking Member Moore, members of the committee. I couldn't agree more uh, with Dr. Dynan that the Fed needs to be accountable to the Congress, and I'm going to uh, uh, discuss one particular way in which that should uh, that accountability should take place uh, relative to savings. Uh, because there's no doubt at all that among the important effects of the Federal Reserve's actions since 2008 up to now has been the expropriation of American savers and that that's made things especially difficult for many retirees. And this, of course, has been done through the imposition of negative real interest rates on savings through a remarkably long period of nine years. Negative interest rates would be expected from the central bank in the crisis mode. We talked a lot about the crisis, but the crisis ended eight years ago. Uh, after that, the Fed wanted to inflate asset prices to achieve a so-called wealth effect. Um, well, house prices bottomed five years ago, and they are back up over their bubble peak. The stock market is at all-time highs. So what's the Fed doing? Still forcing negative interest rates on savers at this point. The Fed should be required to explain that to Congress. And I recommend that Congress require a formal savers impact analysis from the Federal Reserve at each discussion of its policies and plans with the committees of jurisdiction. Under the Choice Act, this would be quarterly. This analysis should discuss, quantify, and talk about the plans of the Fed as they relate to savings and savers so that these can be balanced with other relevant factors. Now, the Fed endlessly announces to the world its intention to create perpetual inflation at 2%, which is equivalent to a plan to depreciate savings at the rate of 2% a year. Against that plan, what are savers getting? Uh, the FDIC's June 2017 report shows the average interest rate on savings accounts is 0.06%. The average national money market deposit account rate is 0.12 percent, and in no case can savers get their real yield anywhere near zero, that is to say near the inflation rate. In other words, thrift, prudence, and self-reliance, which is what we should be encouraging, instead are being strongly discouraged. Uh, Congressman Foster said a minute ago we have to think about distributional consequences of the Fed's actions. I agree with that. And overall, speaking of distribution, the Fed has been taking money from savers in order to give it to borrowers. Uh, this benefits borrowers in general, but in particular it benefits highly leveraged speculators uh, in financial markets and speculators in real estate. More importantly, it benefits the biggest borrower of all, the government itself. And expropriating savers through the Federal Reserve is a way of achieving unlegislated Taxation. Uh, one term for this is financial repression, and financial repression is what we've got. Uh, by my estimate, the Federal Reserve has taken since 2008 about $2.4 trillion from savers. The specific calculation is shown in the table, which is included in my written testimony, which compares normal, based on the 50-year average real interest rates, to those uh, that we have had since 2008 and we multiply by the savings base, and to repeat the answer, it's $2.4 trillion. Now, there can be no doubt that taking $2.4 trillion in, from some people and giving it to other people is a political act. As a political act, it should be openly and clearly discussed with the elected representatives of the people who have the constitutional responsibility for the nature of money. And in this context, it's an obvious fact the Fed is just as bad at economic and financial forecasting as everybody else is. It has no special insight into the future, and since it can't see the future, it must rely on theories. Mr. Kubiak said they're refining the thinking on theories. I say they keep changing the theories. And grown-up substantive discussions with the Congress about which theories the Fed is applying what the alternatives are, who the winners and losers may be, and what the implications for political economy and political finance are, just as the Choice Act suggests, would be a big step forward in the accountability of the Federal Reserve. And a key part of these discussions, I again suggest, should be a formal 
Savers Impact Analysis. Thank you very much for the chance to share these views.